Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, training programs, skilled trade professions, employment opportunities, career exploration, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Kirtan, your host, and today we're going to be talking about the FAFSA application and the FSA ID, federal ID and how to apply um, and going through the process. So I'm going to open up my screen and we're going to begin. We're going to start sharing this information with you. So here. Okay, so today we're talking to you about the FAFSA application and how to apply and getting your FSA ID. FAFSA is a federal grant um, opportunity to provide students with uh, federal student aid to assist them in their college expenses, paying for your tuition and your books and your room and board. I want to begin by talking to you about an organization called Trio Educational Opportunity Center. They are a federally funded organization. They're located on the campus of Wayne State University. Uh, the representative there, her name is Ms. Rogers. Her contact information is listed right there in the box. She, if you contact Trio, contact Ms. Rogers, they will help you fill out the FAFSA application, get your FSA ID, answer questions, help you fill out college applications. Very good organization and they do all of this for free. As I said, they're located on the campus of Wayne State University in the city of Detroit, but they are not limited to Wayne State University. They will help you um, apply to any college anywhere in the, in the United States. As I said, they are a federally funded program and they are in the business of assisting high school seniors as well as adults who graduated 19 years or old or older. They help you with comprehensive counseling in um, admissions, applying to different schools and programs, financial aid, literacy and career counseling. Very good organization. And again, they do all of this for free. You can't beat free. One of the things you need to gravitate towards in your uh, college or your career pursuit is the term free. <laughs> you need to get next to that as often as possible. Very good organization, very helpful, very patient. They'll go through it step by step with you. These are a list of the services they provide. Um, as I said, they'll help you with the financial aid report. They'll help you fill out the application. They'll help you get your, your uh, username, your password, your federal ID. They also help you understand your SARS, your award report, your student award report. Um, once you apply for financial aid and they determine that you're eligible, they'll send you a report, a report explaining what you're eligible for, what types of financial aid you're eligible for, um, what your next steps will be. Uh, TRIO is an organization that will go through that report with you and let you know exactly what everything means so you're not confused because sometimes um, all of this information all of these applications all of these things that you have to do they, they can be very intimidating and overwhelming in addition to all of that they also um, sometimes when you apply you provide information that they can't the government can't verify or confirm and so they'll send you a verification uh, report back saying, 
we need clarification on this, explain this, provide this document. TRIO Education will help you go through that document and understand what it is they're talking about and help you provide those documents to send back to them so that you can receive your financial aid. They also assist students who find themselves in an unfortunate position of being homeless. Um, sometimes you literally are on the street, but you wanna to go to school. You wanna better yourself. You wanna change uh, the circumstances that you're in. Or um, you're not necessarily living on the street, but you're staying with friends or relatives. You yourself, you don't have a permanent home that's yours. You stay with other people, you know, as they, as they allow. That kind of a situation, it kind of hinders your ability to get financial aid to go to school. Um, TRIO Education will work with you to document and provide the necessary things that the federal government needs so that when you submit your FAFSA application, um, you'll be approved for it. Also, uh, they assist young men who have to apply for selective services. Selective services is when you turn 18, young men turn 18 and they have to register with the, the armed forces. Now, you know, you might say, I don't wanna do that. And that is your choice. But understand this, if you want financial aid to um, assist your expenses for going to school, you have to apply for selective services and TRIO Education will help you do that. As I indicated, they also provide you with assistance in applying to various colleges, universities, trade schools. They if you don't know what it is you want to do, and many people don't, you know, because it it's kind of hard to determine, you know, what do I want to do? And do I want to do it for the rest of my life? And, you know, you've got all these questions. Um, they'll help, they'll help you through that process. They'll help you figure it out. They'll help you take assessment exams that will determine what types of careers you're best suited for. Um, they also provide fee waivers, college fee waivers. Every college, well, not college. Well, I'm not gonna say every. Most colleges and universities require an application fee when you apply for admission. And they can be kind of costly, you know, 30, 40, $65 per application. Um, and if you are interested in multiple schools, you have multiple application fees that could easily go into the hundreds. So um, if you don't really have that kind of money, TRIO Education will assist you by providing you with a college application fee waiver, which means that this, this document submitted along with your application will eliminate you having to pay that money to apply to that school, to that university. They provide these things for you if you need. Um, fortunate, well, it's not fortunate, but one of the things that has come out of this pandemic is that most colleges and universities have waived their application fee because of the circumstances that um, you know, our country is in. And it is a hardship. So a lot of colleges and universities this year have waived their application fee. But what about next year or the year after that? You know, when we come out of the pandemic, those applications may be reinstated. And if so, TRIO Education is one of the places that you can go to to get that application fee waiver. So how do you qualify to become a participant in their program? Well, it's, it's real easy. You just have to be a citizen or a permanent resident of the United States. You also have to be a resident of Wayne County. You have to be a high school student, you know, currently in high school or you graduate, you know, 19 years of age or older. Or you can be a first generation college student, which means 
that you are the first person in your family to ever go to college and you have to be low income. When you contact them, they will let you know what those income guidelines are, but don't be uh, discouraged or intimidated by that, that terminology, low income, and don't think, oh, I won't qualify. Um, you never know until you contact them and ask, uh, first of all. And then second of all, more likely than not, you probably will qualify. And as I say, they provide an excellent service. With regards to the FAFSA application, um, if, you if you're filling it out on your own and you have some difficulty or you come to a part where you don't quite understand it, you can give them a call. You can make an appointment with them via Zoom and they will help you through that difficulty. As well as, what if you take a look at the application and you go, you know what, this is a little bit much. I, you know, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna fill this out. You can contact them. And they'll sit with you, go through that application line by line and tell you what to plug in. That way you can successfully apply and, and more likely than not receive your award amount. Very good organization. So what is the FAFSA or the free application for federal student aid? Um, you can get that application by going to studentaid.gov. It is an online application that you will fill out and is utilized to determine what, whether or not you are eligible to receive monies to assist you with your college expenses, whether that be in the form of grants, whether it's in the form of um, scholarships, loans, um, or college work study. In any case, this is the document that everyone pulls from to retrieve the information that they need to help determine whether or not you qualify for their grants, loans, or scholarship. There are four different kinds of financial aid. There is the Pell Grant, that's the free federal grant that um, you don't have to pay back that you can utilize for your college expenses. There are loans, uh, federal student loans and private loans, which means, you know, you got them from a banking institution. Uh, there's college work study. There's the Michigan Competitive Scholarship. Um, and there are scholarships and grants that each college and university offers specifically to their students. So when you're considering which college you wanna to go to, one of the things you wanna look at is what kinds of grants and scholarships do they offer their students that enroll on top of the federal Pell Grant, because they do. Um, some of them are academic bases, meaning you need to have a certain grade point average when you apply. And then some of them are income um, need-based grants where uh, based on your income, you may qualify for more additional money that you don't have to pay back. And then there are scholarships where you uh, submit essays for and you write papers for, and based on the information that you write in those papers, um, they select you and determine that they want to award you some money to assist you based on, you know, what you supply. Then there are also um, major or educational department grants. Say, for example, uh, Macomb Community College, for, for example. Macomb Community College has a, um, a grant for students that are interested in pursuing careers in culinary arts. So they have a grant specifically for that department. Anybody interested in going into culinary arts can apply for this money and qualify and, and receive, you know, $700, $1,000 a semester towards their, their, their tuition and expenses because they are a culinary student. Uh, but again, it all starts with filling out your FAFSA. Uh, the FAFSA application opened October 1st. And again, 
The deadline is March 3rd, but don't think that when March 4th gets here, you can't apply because you missed it. What that deadline truthfully is for is for the government to be able to gauge and determine how many people have applied and how much funding do they have left to disperse over those peak, over those um, applicants. So again, it's based on a first come first serve basis. The quicker you get your application in, the better your chances are of getting the full award amount. The award amount this year is 6,300. Um, you, if you file after the 3rd of March, you can still get the uh, Pell Grant. It just may or may not be in the full award amount. You know, What if you qualified for the full $6,300, but you wait until June to apply? And by the time June gets here, so many other people have applied. Now, the award amount you receive is 4,000. You know, these are the things that you wanna take in consideration, which is why it's important uh, for you to get it in. Also, I, I, I can't stress enough. I know a lot of times, most people don't know what it is they wanna do just yet. They haven't made their mind up. They, or, or they haven't made their mind up or they haven't even decided at all. You know, they don't even know if I, you know, I don't know, I, I don't want to go to school, maybe, you know, maybe I, maybe I just want to work. Here's the thing, fill out the FAFSA anyway, because things change, you know, circumstances change. And if you fill it out and then you're awarded the, the money, it'll be there waiting for you. When fall comes and September hits and, and all your friends are going to different schools and, and then you begin to have second thoughts about not attending, well, because you never filled the application out, you, you don't have any money to attend. But if you fill it out and you decide in September, you know what, I changed my mind. I think I wanna go and take a couple of classes. You have that money in place so that when you enroll, you can have it and they can pay for your, your classes that you're taking. It's better, it doesn't hurt anything for you to apply and not utilize the money than if you don't apply at all and then decide, well, you know what? I think I want it to go. Now you don't have the funds to go. So apply, apply and apply soon <laughs> so that you don't run the risk of not receiving everything you could have been entitled to. Again, every other grant scholarship loan resource pulls from that FAFSA application. They get their information determined to determine your eligibility based on you what you put on that FAFSA application. So fill it out and get it in. Again, doesn't hurt you if you don't use it. It only hurts you if you don't apply. So we're gonna take a quick look at a video that gives us an overview of the FAFSA process. So let me stop my uh, share. And we're gonna go in here. If you're interested in financial aid for college or career school, you're going to need to fill out the free application for federal student aid, or FAFSA. It takes most people about 30 minutes to complete online, and the best part is 100% free. And it provides you with access to grants, loans, and work-study funds from the federal government. And many colleges and states use FAFSA information to provide their own college or state financial aid. Before you fill out the FAFSA, it's a good idea to create your FSA ID, a username and password that lets you electronically sign your FAFSA and gives you access to various websites related to federal student aid. And here's an important tip. If your parent is providing information on your FAFSA, he or she will need his or her own FSA ID. 
Visit studentaid.gov forward slash FSAID for more information. Your FAFSA can be completed online at FAFSA.gov and help is provided throughout the online application process. You will need to fill out the FAFSA each year you are in school because your financial situation may change. Plus, you may be able to automatically transfer your tax data from the IRS, making the application even quicker to fill out. Each state and college or career school sets its own deadline for the FAFSA, so it's best to get it done early. Since some of the funds are available on a first-come, first-served basis, you don't want to miss out. Now that you know about the FAFSA, you might be asking, well, how much money will I get? Your college or career school will do the math, and there's a simple formula that they use. First, the college takes your cost of attendance, which is the total amount it will cost you to go to that school. Your cost of attendance will vary from school to school. And then, the college subtracts your expected family contribution, or EFC. Your EFC is based on information provided in your FAFSA and will not change based on the school you attend. However, the EFC is not necessarily the amount of money you will have to pay. Basically, your cost of attendance minus your EFC equals your financial need. Your college uses your financial need and other information to determine how much financial aid you can receive. See? Pretty simple. If you have questions or need more information, please visit studentaid.gov. Okay, so uh, that was a quick video um, talking about the process of the FAFSA application, um, how they determine how you qualify for funds, if you qualify for funds. Um, I wanna mention this, because we are in the middle of a pandemic, it has adversely affected a lot of our um, parents' income. So if you normally would not have qualified for federal aid because they made so much money, this might be a good opportunity um, for you to reconsider and apply because uh, a lot of the pandemic has caused, you know, the pandemic has caused a lot of hardship. And when you apply for this federal aid, you can indicate how it has impacted your, your parents' household income and how, whereas before you may not have qualified, this year you might because of it. So um, don't just dismiss it, take a look at it, fill it out, go through it. And, and all they can tell you is no. Again, it doesn't hurt for you to apply for it. Now we're gonna take a look at another quick video um, that's going to go into the types of financial aid that you can uh, receive. So let me stop this share there. Go in here, go in there. And... If you need help paying for college or career school, the Office of Federal Student Aid might be your best option. We offer more than $150 billion to students each year in the form of grants, loans, and work-study funds. And federal student aid can be used to pay for school expenses, such as tuition, room and board, and books and supplies. After you've filled out the free application for federal student aid, or FAFSA, you'll receive an award letter from each school you list on your FAFSA. This letter explains both the federal and non-federal financial aid options that a school is offering you. So let's talk about federal aid. If you qualify for and receive a federal grant, you won't have to repay the money. That will definitely help offset the cost of school, but you may still need additional help. If so, a federal student loan might be your answer. Remember, a student loan is just like any other loan. It's borrowed money that will have to be repaid with interest. If you plan to take out a loan, Consider federal student loans first. Compared to private student loans, federal student loans often have lower fixed interest rates and offer many benefits that you won't find otherwise. For example, when it's time for you to repay your federal student loan, your loan servicer can work with you to find the best repayment plan for your individual needs. Plus, you may be able to adjust your loan payments based on your income. 
You also may be able to defer your federal loan payments, deduct student loan interest on your taxes, and even consolidate your eligible federal student loans into one loan with one monthly payment. Federal loans can even be forgiven based on certain types of employment. Getting a work-study job is another great option to help pay for school. Eligible undergraduate and graduate students will be able to earn at least minimum wage. If you have questions or need assistance, you can contact the financial aid office at your college or career school or visit studentaid.gov for more information. Okay, so let's go back and So they talked about the different types of college or career school is an important step Hold on in achieving one your future second. goals. I am happy. And there are so they talked about the different types of student aid. Um, I want to touch on a couple of things that they share. Um, again, with regards to loans, you want to make your loans the very last thing that you utilize as your funding um, because you got to pay loans back. It, it makes no sense for you to be wanting to pursue your education to um, better yourselves and give yourselves an opportunity if what you're doing is taking on um, an extensive amount of debt in the process. So make your loans the last thing that you utilize to assist you in your expenses. And if you have to do a loan, do a federal loan, a subsidized loan, as opposed to uh, loans that you take out from the bank unsubsidized. And the reason being is because the federal loan, A, is at a lower interest rate, and two, it, the payment plans or the repayment plan is a lot more lenient than when you borrow from a bank or private institution. Um, with a federal loan, you won't have to pay back, begin to pay back your loan until you have graduated, completed your training, or you've been out of school for at least six months. With the loans that you take out through banks and uh, private institutions, um, when you take them out, you're setting up a payment plan to begin paying, you know, repayment right then. So let loans be your last recourse, but if you do do a loan, do a federal subsidized loan before that. But here's the other thing. You wanna do college as debt-free as possible. You wanna come out of it without having spent as, as little of your money as you possibly can. So consider doing your first two years, your freshman and your sophomore year at community college. The tuition rate, is at, it is a fraction of what universities charge for their tuition. For example, freshman English one, it's a three credit class, no matter what college or university you go to. If you apply to Wayne State University, tuition is at $450 per credit. That makes that English class at $1,300. If you apply to Macomb Community College, same freshman English class, Macomb's tuition is between $97 and $125 per credit. Let's just, let's just make a round number, $100 per credit. That same three credit English class is only going to cost you $300 versus $13 at Wayne State University or any other university because universities and colleges tend to be pretty um, comparable in their tuition rates. You know, there, there'll be differences, but it's not a whole lot of difference. Um, not like community college rates and university rates. So do your liberal arts years, which is your first two years of college your freshman, your sophomore year, your first 24 credits, do it at a community college at an extremely great discount because it will save you a lot of money. Um, 
And that way you can utilize the bulk of your Pell Grant and your scholarships towards those junior and sophomore credits where you're earning towards your, uh, your bachelor's degree. It'll save you a lot of money. All right. Uh, so how to create your FA, FSA ID. You're going to need to create a password between eight and 30 characters in length. You cannot use um, your birth date. You cannot use, you know, anything, your social security, you can't use any of those numbers as part of your password for your FSA ID. Like I said, it has to be eight to 30 characters long. Um, it has to contain both an upper and a lowercase letter, as well as a numeral, a number within the password. You are going to use this FSA ID your entire educational career. You will not need to change it and they won't really allow you to change it. The only way they will let you, you change it is if you forget what your password is. So when you create your FSA ID, take a photo of it, keep it in your phone or keep it in the notes sec and keep it in the notes section of your phone, as well as keep a hard copy in your file. But your phones, we keep our phones with us all the time. So uh, that's a handy location for you to access it at will, never forgetting it. Take that screenshot and keep it in your phone because it will follow you year after year as long as you're in school. There's no need to change it once they, you know, once you create that ID, the government, they don't really see a need to change it because it causes a lot of uh, confusion because, you know, a lot of people have the same names. You will be surprised how many people will create similar passwords. And so if they've got all these passwords floating around in their databases, it, it really makes it, um, hard to keep up with and, and it, it creates a lot of issues for them. So when you create that username and password, that's, that's it. And your parents, they have to create a separate one from you that they should keep. Photograph in the phone again, record it in your notes and keep a hard copy. That way you're always having it. We're going to take a look at a quick video and um, it's going to show us how to apply for the FSA ID. So, Perhaps you're a student, parent, or loan borrower who needs to apply for financial aid, electronically sign your FAFSA form, or access other functionalities on the studentaid.gov site. To take full advantage of all our resources and log into studentaid.gov, you'll have to first create an FSA ID. Your FSA ID gives you access to federal student aid's features, tools, and can serve as your legal signature. Your FSA ID is your account username and password. To prepare to create your FSA ID, have your social security number, mobile phone, and your personal email address handy. To start, navigate to studentaid.gov and select Create Account. Once you're on the Create Account page, select the Get Started button. If you're completing a FAFSA form and are considered a dependent student, keep in mind that you will need to create your own separate FSA ID using your own personal information. mobile phone number, email address, and social security number can be associated with only one FSA ID. For helpful tips throughout the FSA ID creation process, 
Select the question mark icon that display next to each field. Next, you'll create your username, enter an email address, and create your password. We recommend using a non-school-based email address since you will need to access your federal student aid account after you graduate. Make sure you don't include private information, such as your name or date of birth, as part of your password. Quick tip. Remember, an email address can be associated with only one username and password. Next, enter your permanent address and mobile phone number. Indicate if you want to use your mobile phone for account recovery. We highly recommend this option, as it will help you access your account if you forget your username or password in the future. After selecting Continue, you'll be prompted to choose your communications preferences. On the Communications Preferences screen, select if you'd like to receive required communications from the Department of Education via email or by postal mail. We recommend email. Besides the required communications, we occasionally send you informational communications about grants, student loan forgiveness, or income-based repayment plans you may qualify for. You can opt to receive these by email, text message, or both, or choose not to receive information communications. You'll also have the option to select English or Spanish as your preferred language for the communications we send you. Next, you'll select four challenge questions and answers. Memorize or keep these answers in a safe place in case you need them to help access your account in the future. Choose a question using the drop-down and add your answer in the text box. Select Show Answer to see your answer as you type it. Your answers are not case sensitive. You're almost there. On this step, you can review your information and confirm everything looks correct. If you need to make a correction, select the Edit button within that tile of information. After ensuring your information is correct, review and agree to the terms and conditions at the bottom of the screen. This is the last step before your account is completed. Select the Verify my mobile phone number button and or the verify my email address button to verify your contact information. If you enter an email address and mobile phone number for your account, you'll need to verify both. After selecting the verify my mobile phone number button, you will see a pop-up. Enter the six-digit secure code that was sent to the mobile number associated with your account. If you did not receive a code, Select the Resend Secure Code link. After entering the six-digit code and selecting Continue, you'll see a Verify checkmark under the Verify My Mobile Phone Number button. The same steps apply when verifying your email address. Select the Verify My Email Address button and enter the six-digit code you received in your email in the pop-up box. Note, the secure code will expire after 30 minutes. Once your contact information is verified, select Finish. Congratulations, you've successfully created your FSA ID. If you entered an email address, you will receive a confirmation email. Make sure you note your username and password and keep them in a safe place. You can begin using your account immediately, but it will take one to three days for your information to be verified by the Social Security Administration. Some of your actions in the site will be limited until your information is verified. However, with your newly created FSA ID, you can immediately complete and sign a first-time FAFSA form. You can also use your FSA ID to access your dashboard, view your loan balance, and explore additional dashboard features. If you are not able to take control of your federal student aid journey and access all studentaid.gov has to offer. Okay, so as they said in the video, it's important that you record your username and password down and keep it because this is the same password that you're going to use year after year throughout, you know, your educational career. And, you know, the only way that you'll create a new one is if um, you forget it and you get locked out, but you don't want to do that. Take a pic, like I say, take a picture of it with your phone, keep it in your notes, as well as keep a hard copy. Also, when they were referring to the communications portion of it, where they said that they can send you notifications via email and your phone about different uh, grants and awards, please, please, please check yes. 
absolutely check yes, because there are so many scholarship and grant opportunities out there for you to get money to help assist you in your expenses. It's not even funny. Uh, for example, there is an actual scholarship out there that they award money for, for people who are left-handed. If you're a left-handed person, you can apply for this scholarship and get money. And I'm not talking a few dollars. I'm talking about thousands of dollars for this. And they have other peculiar and obscure um, scholarships and grants like that, similar to that, that they could be sending you information on. So in the communications area on the uh, application where you're filling out for your FSA ID, check yes, you want those notifications about various scholarships and grant opportunities that um, can come your way. So these are the documents that you're going to need when you begin to fill out your FAFSA application. It is important that you have these documents in front of you. Don't have them in your file. Don't have them in another room. When you sit down to do this application, have everything right there in front of you in order so that when they ask this question, when they ask the next question, you, you pick the document up, enter the information, move to the next question. Pick the document up, enter the inter information, move to the next question. It makes things so much more easier. You also eliminate the time delay when you're filling out the application. Um, you can always save your information and go back to it, but you don't want to have so many lapses in idle time in your screens so that the screen times you out. You don't do that. That's why you should have all your documents in front of you. You are going to need your social security number. If you have your social security card, that is the best because if you're trying to remember it, recall it, or if you're looking at a piece of paper that you wrote it on, it could possibly be wrong. You could, maybe you can't, I know sometimes I can't read my own writing. So, you know, if you got the actual card, look at the card because that's the document that has the information on it. And you can take that information from that document and plug it right into the box on the computer where it's asking the question. You need your driver's license. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. If you are a resident alien, meaning that you are not a citizen of the United States, you're from a foreign country, you need to have your alien registration card. The information from that is gonna be entered into your FAFSA application. You also need the income tax returns from 2019. If you work and supported yourself, you'll need your tax returns. If you are a dependent of your parent, then you will need their information from 2019 their tax return information. You're gonna also need your parents' social security number. You're gonna need their date of birth. And if your parents are married, you're gonna need the month and the year that they were married. And if your parents have uh, divorced, then you're gonna need the month and the year that they divorced. You're gonna also need their income information, their W-2 information. W-2s come from their employment, if they're not employed and they receive uh, disabilities or social security, then they're gonna need their social security uh, document showing how much income they earned for the year 2019. Here is a picture of what each of these documents that we just went through looks like. This right here is a photograph of your social security card Again, it's right there. Those are the numbers imprinted on the card. This is the best resource document that you can use when you're plugging in your information because making a mistake in entering those digits, it is such a challenging fix. That's why I'm suggesting Take it from the actual document, not from your memory, not from something you wrote it down on. 
take it from the document. This is what your driver's license will look like. This is your, your resident alien card. This is a copy of your W-2. This is a copy of the 1040. And this is a social security or disability statement if that is where you earn your income from. So these are the documents that you will need to have when you begin to fill out your FAFSA application. Okay, so now we're going to look at a quick video on how to fill out the FAFSA application. So let me come out of here. Go in here. Pick that up. Go there and student aid or FAFSA is the application for grants, loans, and work study funds provided by the federal government. It is also used by many states and schools for their financial aid programs. For the fastest and easiest way to apply, visit our official website, fafsa.gov. The FAFSA is available in English and Spanish. As you fill it out online, you'll be able to automatically skip questions that don't pertain to you, check out your status immediately, and get online help. It takes most people less than 30 minutes to complete the application. You'll need a few things when you fill it out, so get ready by gathering your social security number, your permanent resident card if you have one, any W-2 forms or records of money you earned for the previous year, and your tax records. By the way, a nice time-saving feature of the FAFSA is that many people are eligible to automatically transfer their tax data from the IRS into the FAFSA. So keep an eye out while you're applying in case you're offered that option. If you have any questions about what information to gather, there is a complete list of documents that you will need at FAFSA.gov. Before you begin the process of filling out the FAFSA, you should create a username and password called an FSA ID that will act as your electronic signature. You'll only need to create an FSA ID once, and you can use it to renew your FAFSA each year that you apply. Your parents will need an FSA ID too if they have to provide any information. So now you're ready to begin filling out the FAFSA to apply for financial aid. There are three groups of questions that include personal information, such as your name, address, and marital status, financial information, such as your income, and any parent information that is required. If you get hung up or confused about a question, the help and hints box on the right-hand side of the application can help with each question as you move along. Also, look for the online chat feature under help if you would like assistance from a knowledgeable agent. Because colleges and career schools use the FAFSA to provide financial aid, you can list up to 10 schools that you are interested in attending. You should list all of the schools that you are considering, even if you haven't been accepted or applied yet. If you have more than 10 schools in mind, you can submit your FAFSA with 10 schools and then replace some of those schools with other schools later. When you finish filling out the FAFSA, use your FSA ID to sign the form. If you are required to submit parent information on your FAFSA, a parent will need to sign the application with his or her own FSA ID as well. If you have any questions or need more information, please visit studentaid.gov. Okay, so that's an overview on how to fill out the FAFSA application. Again, the key is make sure you have all your documents right there in front of you, filling out that information, taking that information straight from those documents and plugging it in. It's an easy process especially if you are prepared and you have everything in front of you. Take your time, don't be rushed, carefully look at your documents, plug in the information, carefully read the questions they're asking you. You know, it, again, if you have difficulty, if you don't quite understand what they mean, hit save, come out of the screen and contact Miss Rogers at Trio Education and let her help you through this difficulty. 
Now that you filled out your FAFSA application, once you've completed it, like they said, once you hit submit, they will send you um, an immediate response on receipt of the transmission and provide you with some information. But what do you do now? You know, where do you go? What's required now? How do you receive the money? Where does it go? So we're gonna look at a quick video on how to uh, go to our next steps once we've submitted the FAFSA application. So let me come out of here. So you filled out the FAFSA. Now what? The information you submitted will be processed by the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid, and the colleges or career schools you listed will be notified so they can begin their process of awarding aid. The great thing about filling out the FAFSA online is that you can check its processing status immediately. This comes in handy when you're thinking, I wonder if it went through. Within a few days of filling out the FAFSA, you'll get your Student Aid Report, or SAR. You'll hear that abbreviation again, so just remember, your SAR is your Student Aid Report. Basically, it summarizes all of the information you submitted on the FAFSA. You can access your SAR online at fafsa.gov using your FSA ID, which is your username and password. Check your SAR for any mistakes. Then make corrections if you need to, but only if you estimated your tax information or provided incorrect information the day you filled out the FAFSA. On your SAR, you'll see reference to your EFC, or expected family contribution. This number is used to determine your eligibility for federal student aid. It doesn't mean you actually have to contribute that amount. The financial aid office at each college or career school you list on your FAFSA will receive your information. Each office will then use your FAFSA information to determine how much aid you can get at that school. It's possible that your college or career school may require you to verify the information you submitted on your FAFSA. If that happens, your school will tell you what you need to do. Once you're accepted into a college or career school, you'll get an award letter from the school's financial aid office that explains the aid being offered to you. We'd recommend comparing award letters from multiple schools. That way you can make the best decision for your situation. If you have any questions about your financial aid offer, contact the school's financial aid office. If your aid offer includes a federal loan and you're a first time borrower, there are a few more steps before you get your loan. You'll need to complete entrance counseling and sign the master promissory note or MPN, which is your agreement to pay back the loan. Your school will provide you with the necessary information. So how do you get your money? Well, usually your grants and loans will be applied to tuition fees and other charges on your student account first. Then any leftover money is paid to you. Work study funds are earned throughout the term. Remember, filling out the FAFSA is not a one-time thing. You must complete it every year you attend school. If you have questions or need more information, please visit studentaid.gov. Okay, so that is the complete process on how to fill out the application for your FSA ID and your FAFSA application. Again, um, in the last video, it showed the number of schools that you can apply or send your financial aid information to. You know, some people know exactly where they wanna go. They wanna go to um, Eastern Michigan University so that that's the only school they put down. Um, then other students, they want to go to Eastern, but they got some friends at Wayne State and um, a couple of friends at Central, and so they don't know which one they're going to pick, so they are going to put all three down and make a decision. And then there are some students that, that don't really know at all where they want to go. They got some kind of idea, but not really um, list all of the schools and programs that you're interested in going to in the order of preference, what you prefer to do first, where you prefer to go to first. It, it, again, 
it doesn't hurt that you're listing all of these uh, schools and programs. Um, what it means is that wherever you make the decision and decide to go, they'll already have your financial aid information. And, and this, is, this is the bonus here. They'll already have your financial aid information and they can already begin to apply your financial aid information to any scholarships and grants that they offer specifically to their students. I wanna share a story with you about a young man that graduated from our program and he was applying to um, three different schools, one of which was Michigan State. Now he had not submitted his application for admission, but he had said within himself that maybe one of the schools that I wanna attend. So on his FAFSA application, he listed Michigan State as one of the schools. So um, he submitted the application and shortly thereafter, he received a letter from Michigan State saying, hey, congratulations, you received the Spartan Award. And so um, he contacted us and said, what is this Spartan Award? You know, I, I didn't apply to Michigan State. So what are they talking about? And so we went through it. And as it turns out, um, based on the information from his FAFSA application, they pulled that information out and applied it to the Spartan grant and scholarship that they offered their students that go to their schools and awarded him an additional $5,000 a year for his tuition and expenses, his room and board, his books. That was on top of the grant award from the Pell Grant that he received. So that's why I'm saying to you, put down, I'm saying several things. First thing I'm saying is fill out the FAFSA application and get it in. Second thing I'm saying is, if, even if you have not made a definite decision on which program, which school you want to attend, list all of the ones that you're interested in because they offer many scholarships and grants specifically to their students. So you fill out the FAFSA, turn it in based on that information. Every school you're interested in pulls that information in and determines whether or not you qualify for any grants or scholarships that they offer. And so then that turns into money on top of the grant money that you're, go you're gonna receive from the Pell Grant. So that is the end of our tutorial and instruction. Again, if you have difficulty or if you don't even want to do the application yourself, contact TRIO Educational Opportunity Center. They will help you through whatever difficulty you have, or they will help you do the entire application. It, either way, they're there to assist you. They'll also help you with college applications. And even if you don't know exactly what it is that you want to do now that you're a graduate, they'll help you narrow those choices down and figure it out. Ms. Rogers is your contact person. She's the university counselor for TRIO Education. Again, they are located on Wayne State University's campus in Detroit, Michigan but they are not limited to Wayne State University. They will help you in whatever program, in whatever college or university you wanna to go to. In Michigan, outside of Michigan, it doesn't matter. They can help you. You can reach her at 313-577-7769, or you can contact her by email. Email address is eg4994 at wayne.com. EDU, because we're still in the middle of a pandemic, they are scheduling their appointments via Zoom. It's one-on-one, -on -one. you and Ms. Rogers, private. You can discuss your financial um, situation. You can 
have her help you out. No problem. All of it's free. All of it's free. All of it's free. Again, Ms. Rogers at Trio Educational Opportunity Center. She's there to help. And I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another episode of College and Career Pathways. My name's Tony Curitan. If you need any assistance, if I can direct you in any way, if I can provide you with any resources, please feel free to contact me. My number is 586-842-0558. My extension is 312. And my email address is tonic at atsedu net. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining me and have a great day.